Welcome to International Sufi Center. We have been carrying on of late discussions, interviews and lectures and talks on various aspects of Sufism. Today we have with us Engineer Syed Ahmad Mustafa Sahib who belongs to the district of Tennalveli in a small hamlet known as Padal Putur where there is a famous shrine and dargah of very great eminent Sufis who have settled there for the last 400 years. The worship is dedicated to Sheikh Mahiuddin Abdul Khadr Jilani Rahmatullah Alayh of Baghdad and his four fathers have been sajjad and nishins and inamdars of that place. They have also been sajjad and nishins of Hassan Raza Sahib Rahmatullah Alayh in Arkat and also saints of Nagar Koil. They are very eminent persons. I had occasion to visit the place for more than three times and people from all walks of life from the states of Kerala and Tamil Nadu pay their homage every day and they also have a very big annual urs where thousands of people assemble there to pay their respects and homage to the Sufis. Engineer Sayyid Ahmad Mustafa Sahib is very much practicing Sufi. He wants to learn more and more about Sufism and his forefathers have left behind a great heritage with antique books in Persian and Arabic. He is here with us and we would like to we would like to ask more about his Sufism to clear his understanding to find the path of enlightenment and illumination. He wants to know the Sufi way of life and about the Sufi path. Assalamu alaikum Sufi Sayyid Ahmad Mustafa Sahib, we welcome you to our center. Thank you. And you are a young person who is now marching in the future and would like to know from you the concept of Sufism as understood by the youngsters and what the aims and aspirations of the new generation is towards spirituality. You may, before you ask many questions to me, you can first explain your background and your understanding of the spiritualism. Hello everybody, Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, my name is uh, Sayyid Ahmed Mustafa and uh, I'm, I am an electrical engineer and uh, after finishing my engineering, uh, currently I'm working in Bangalore into marketing and sales. So as far as the question of uh, spirituality is concerned and uh, my understanding of spirituality is concerned is that uh, this has been always the back, uh, th this has been always, you know, uh, the, the heart of Islam wherein which, which guides a human being towards the godliness, towards peace, towards the, the, the light of God. So uh, with this 
uh, capacity with this with this uh, with these things in my mind so i would like to uh, question mr uh, sayed liaqat piran on uh, certain aspects from the uh, younger generations uh, perspective so my uh, first question uh, would be this at uh, the question is is not about uh, either practicing sufism or uh, spirituality on the whole but the question is about uh, as of now as we get mingled with the younger generation in in our offices or let's say uh, uh, in a, in our offices or or anywhere else uh, the, the question is not about as i said the question is not about practicing spirituality or understanding the spirituality but the younger generation is totally uh, is, is completely uh, unaware of the uh, not only the benefits of spirituality but there's there's been no such interest shown by the by the younger generation and the the biggest challenge here is that it has been not even uh, i mean right from their uh, parents this particular concept of spirituality is is lagging for example uh, to make it very clear let's say if if a child would want to go get into spirituality as of now in 2016 probably uh, most of the parents may oppose it or may not like it rather uh, the the child getting into a into a profession uh, rather uh, getting into spirituality i'm not trying to say that they should leave a profession and get into spirituality but yes having being in a profession and understanding even the basic understandings of spirituality is not seen in the younger generation so how do you think that this can be eradicated and how do you think that uh, what can be the changes which can be brought in to understand the importance of spirituality sufism Oh, thank you very much for posing this very important question. Especially, this is a concern of the older generations. The older generations were imbibed in the ancient Indian civilization and culture. There was shame and very high moral virtues, and they practiced it in their Our older generation, the adab which is taught in the Sufism was cultivated among all sections of the people, right from the bottom most percent to the nawabs and maharajas. The aspect of adab, that is culture, that is manners and good conduct. was part and parcel of education and daily living unfortunately due to economic social political changes which has come in the country due to westernization the hold of the ancient culture is slowly slipping down and mere rituals are being followed other are mass heroes who are worship mostly the mass heroes are emerging from film industry because the film is now exhibited in the tv media and on the screens and the youngsters are more drawn towards the joys mirth games the ever popularity of sports and most particular in india in cricket has thrown many a great sportsmen for adoration because they bring more fame the film artists actors and the sports personalities and politicians they seems to have taken the grip on the minds of the people unfortunately a child is put into the schooling at the age of 2 even before the child can enjoy the pleasures from the parents uncles aunts grandparents and joint families the concept of joint family has slowly waned away a unitary family has come into existence and most of the parents are working persons they leave the child in the care of servants or in the nurseries and there is no imbibing of culture and the importance of 
moral, spiritual life. There have been great efforts done by very great eminent yogis and Sufis of India, more particularly Shirdi Sri Sai Baba, Satya Sai Baba, Ram Das, and Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. They have a huge following and they are trying to bring back the youngsters to the way of spiritual life. We have thousands of Sufi mausoleums who are trying to imbibe the ancient culture of adab, manners, good conduct and good virtues to be imbibed in their daily living. Now we can't blame anyone because the economic system has changed from the agrarian economy to the present utilitarian society. Use and throw aspects has come and everyone needs to work for more than 15 to 16 hours a day right from a small person to a highest person. They have to keep working to produce more and more and there are banks which are doling out money through credit cards and the indebtedness has creeped in in everyone's mind and heart and more pleasures and entertainments have been brought in or pumped in in the society. I suppose these factors are the cause for waning away of spirituality. Spirituality requires time, it requires leisure, it requires patience, it requires tolerance, it requires lot of exercises to be done in the form of customs, traditions, and every festival was designed in such a way that the people consider their mundane life as less important and the focus was more towards the higher goals of goodness, charity, brotherhood, oneness and to realize God in their lives. So your question is a very pertinent one and the answer is very difficult to give. It is for the whole nation, more particularly the leaders, who have to give, do enormous work. The politicians have got the aim of only ruling and in order to capture power, they spend enormous money and use of alcohol is so high and intermingling of sexes also that it has led to promiscuity and promiscuity and alcoholism has indeed led to various stress and strains and diseases are spreading due to use of all the tobacco the cancer is spreading wildly although the government has taken steps for preventing advertisements of tobacco items but they have not stopped the cultivation. Along with the tobacco there is use of drugs among the youngsters, hashish, ganja, opium, marijuana and various LSDs and other drugs. There is no concerted effort among the in the society to prevent these disastrous, to prevent the disastrous consequences of excessive use of drugs, alcohol, entertainment, games. It has become more a necessity to release tension and the tension is being released through alcoholism, dance, nightclubs, games instead of leading a yogic, Sufi way of life. The yogic Sufi way of life is very silent, meditative, contemplative, in search of knowledge and in search of peace. And it is through Sangha, good Sangha, good Jamaat, not a fanatical way of showing supremacy of the one religion or the other, but it is more to cherish the heart, to delight the heart with classical thinking, classical music, 
classical way of life but unfortunately the modernity has taken away all the good which is required to be retained for the sustenance of the society i hope i have been able to throw some light i would like to answer you more and more to the things which are required to develop sufism and to encourage yoga you sufism mysticism poetry literature art in the society please share your views thank you thank you for the answer sir and uh, it was uh, it was really great uh, very much informative about my question and so uh, my uh, second question is uh, uh, for those people who i mean in in today's world for those people who are practicing sufis or uh, who are interested into spirituality so the question is like uh, people uh, like a, a common man who goes to office who comes back to home who hardly finds time to even sit with their families in today's life uh, with with such a huge traffic coming and going uh, right from their home to the office and from the office to their home so when a person uh, practices this kind of a life when a person is living in such a life uh, i'm not uh, the the obviously the question is about he would not be able to take some time for spirituality but my question is uh, as as you generally say that you know spirituality is all about controlling your 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 uh, senses or controlling of the nerves so in this case when a person is completely uh, is, is is completely into his office work or when he comes back to his home he has he 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 gets very less time so when a person is completely immersed into these kind of thoughts which is which becomes his entire world like like uh, right from morning he gets up let's say 6 am or to 11 11 pm when he goes to, goes to sleep so i'm not talking about getting some time for zikr or i'm not talking about getting some time for yoga but when a person's world itself or he is completely immersed with his office work or his colleagues work or there are some targets been given so within <clears throat> within this pressure how do you think how, how do you see with a uh, with a sophistic eye that you know how a person can practice sufism because the major point which you say is that uh, he uh, a person has to control himself or has to understand himself so how do you think this is possible so i again repeat my question i mean the question is not about uh, uh, taking some time for yoga or for meditation or for zikr but the question is about when a person is already immersed into these kind of into this into such a world so how uh, do you think that you know he they would be able to achieve the spiritual consciousness i say very pertinent questions question which is troubling the youngsters especially in the informatic technology especially those who are sitting right across the computers for 8 hours 10 hours if you take the whole society into consideration this way of life adopted by the technocrats would be perhaps in a small percentage compared to the whole cosmos of the the whole humanity and the whole population of the country or the whole world as it is there are people who have got lot of leisure that's why they are spending so much time on entertainment watching games going to the stadiums to spend about 8 hours watching cricket matches football matches hockey matches go to night clubs they have plenty of time but these are the small section of technocrats who are finding it very difficult to move with the fast face of computerization and creating programs and deadlines pass completing deadlines but i would like, most of these questions have been posed to great spiritualists especially sri sri ravi shankar and uh, ram das and all such type great uh, hindu saints and muslim saints they have always try to answer and train them in their kriya yoga deep breathing silence they always point out to certain methods which can be adopted during the time when you are traveling see today to reach the office and return back go to our factories to place a work and come back takes enormous time how do we spend this time is a question most of them will be dozing or watching traffic 
are getting worried about the things there are lot of videos playing in their mind and in before their eyes about the troubles they have in their personal matrimonial life worrying about it and uh, worrying about their sick child sick parents or about their own sickness about their own lack of opportunities of their promotion not getting promotions not getting enough money to fulfill the needs so these are uh, major uh, troubling things which are there in the mind which prevents a person from contemplation and meditation even if he is meditating his meditation is disturbed so first and foremost things is to find peace tranquility and harmony in your own mind which is apart from the pressures you are facing in the life now when you get up in your sleeping in the sleep is disturbed bad dreams and you wake up in the night for more than 2 3 times and you don't have a fast deep sleep and that when you get up in the morning you feel as if you are not fresh there is no freshness in your mind so this is because of the deep worry and the hard work you have done and lack of oxygen so we have to treat this aspect medically psychologically socially and reach to a point when you can find some peace in your mind not through medicines but through exercise and yogic practices sufi practices of meditation you have to find hope you have to find faith the first aspect which is taught in all the spiritual sciences is that you should develop enormous faith faith in god faith in your guru faith in your parents absolute and pure sub- subjugation submission surrender this is apart from your scientific thinking scientific way of life huge time you take out for your work and all that in the mentally in psychologically within deep within yourself there has to be a strong faith that there exists a greater being who can solve my problems he will take away all the problems i am living for him and him alone and that gives you certainty that is known as iman yaqeen then after iman and yaqeen you come to ishq and love when you have deep love with in your own self which is part of compassion and mercy your heart glows your mind glows and the hard work which you are doing is eases itself there is joy there is there is pleasure there is bliss there is tranquility in your mind and heart your first and foremost is you have to stick on to this gift of compassion and mercy which god has given to every human being if you hold on to that with faith yaqeen iman ishq then you have certain built in defenses against all the outward attacks on your mind and heart they take care of itself just as the red cells red blood corpuscles without your own knowledge or awareness they are protecting you from various viruses bacteria from various diseases there are thousands of diseases disease carrying bacteria and uh, viruses and others entering the human body but nothing is happening to you it is because you are taking healthy food full of extent of oxygen and the red blood cells when they are supplied with this they have prepared defenses antigens they fight against all that your eye does not get redness madras eye as they say your skin is protected you don't get itching you don't get irritation you get good hunger you eat proper food staple food then you have proper clean motion in the early morning when before going so all these antigens are not prepared are prepared in the body to disturb you first you should have a healthy living 
healthy sleep healthy exercise and healthy thinking and when you are traveling either in scooter or in the bus you should keep your mind free and not keep thinking about things which are happening all around you when you are watching the window you should your mind should get, not get disturbed with these polluting things pollution should be avoided both in the breathing in the thinking in the action in your temper you should not have high temper high anger dis- disgust frustration you should be happy and be satisfied with the amount you are earning and work for the development of your inner personality and in your talents and show your goodness to your colleagues and your boss so that they are satisfied with your character they should feel that this here is a man who is prepared to work hard satisfy reach the goals so you must have goals if you have good goals of reaching the pinnacle of success you should have good sleep good talk good manners good adabs iman iman is a very important thing faith certainty of faith yakeen as they say you must have with knowledge with good thinking good power of uh, imagination they are all exercises which you have to do and you have to work very hard as i have said earlier in my talks life is a war and you have to get prepared for it if you can't say your parents have not given you and imbibed you your teachers have not done your colleagues have not done that is only these things which be youngsters who are not equipped with this they see a lot of problems in their life others grow they get promotions regularly and they reach the top they wisely invest their monies in their proper places they avoid alcohol they avoid drugs they avoid uh, smoking they avoid going to the clubs they avoid going to the hotels and eating ba- bad food junk food as they say they are very healthy in their uh, life pre marriage and after marriage also they don't pick up quarrels with their wife they have a good matrimonial life so there are so many factors in our individual life which we have to achieve through good sangha good parents good colleagues avoid quarrels avoid uh, arguments be friendly they are all uh, small petty things but they add cumulatively to the making of the human personality the inner consciousness slowly grows from the animal consciousness to moral consciousness to spiritual consciousness to divine consciousness the aim of youngster should be to become divine consciousness like the buddhist who say to who teach that one should the one same is nirvana and speaking truth and living a good life so also sufi so also muslim so also christians but unfortunately we are only have labels and we perform our rituals in a very fast and quick manner we want quick fix solutions which is the cause for the disturbance in the personality mind and heart so as a technocrat when you have you must create time within yourself while even in sleep you must avoid and turn a new leaf in your method of sleep you must have good oxygen good aeration good company and undisturbed sleep there should be no disturbances in the air in the around where you are sleeping you should have a good pillow you should have a good uh, you should wrap yourself in winter season with a good blanket so that you are not disturbed and when you have a good sound 8 hours of sleep then you should have a good bath and then after a good bath you should have a good breakfast and not quarrel during the time of breakfast with your people who are eating with you but be silent silence itself brings meditation then you must meditate while you are going in the bus and when you get down and you are doing work also you must concentrate totally on the work in, in between you must relax and you must have meditation so there are various personality trainings which are done both in house for your work and in the job and in the this one to keep you calm and cool and to keep your mind tranquil so these are all aspects of training unfortunately where there has been a miss and people have lost the connection to all these good things and uh, they get into problem but once they get into problem they must bring a change by joining some sangha some good uh, uh, people who are practicing all this and the good transformation takes place good magnetic waves will come around and there will be a change i think i my answer has been too long i would like to invite 
two three more questions so that the balance of the time we can give it to those questions yeah uh, thank you thank you for this great information uh, i mean that was uh, very much informative uh, on my question so my third question uh, is uh, <clears throat> like uh, right from the sufi scholars to the majzubs or all the sufis have been repeatedly repeatedly saying this one point that you live in the present you live for the moment you live for the day you live in the present my question is not about how do i live for the moment how do i live for the day or how do i live for the present but the question is what is this i mean uh, for a for a person uh, for a person uh, who has been educated for 12 till is 16 till he 16 years old uh, right uh, in the in the uh, in the profession of you know it can be any such profession engineering or or uh, right from schoolings or 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 whatever so for such a person when he listens to this that live for the present live for the moment so what actually does it means uh, and and uh, and as well if you could explain how it can be uh, achieved would be really great Uh, this is the main theme of uh, spiritualism live within yourself travel within yourself discover yourself live for the moment it means you have a challenge right in front of you that should not be neglected that should be attended immediately it mean it could be that you have presently not taken care of your health you have neglected your health you have neglected your parents you have neglected your children you have neglected your wife you have not renewed your license you have not renewed your insurance you have got lot of forgetfulness you have got lot of physical weakness you have got spiritual weakness all these things are your present they are not something of future to build up huge bank balance to buy a flat of 1 1.5 crores 2 crores for that you are thinking of taking a loan from the bank the bank repayment is almost about for 50 to 70% of your salary you would like to manage with your credit cards with the small savings from your wife you plan out in such a way humpty dumpty sat on a wall humpty dumpty had a great fall all the kings horses all the queens horses could not put humpty dumpty back on the wall again these are all simple truths which have been taught to us in the nursery that you should not plan in such a way that you fall down and nobody can help you to bring back to you to the original position so step by step step by step you should reach the goal one at a time that's why great uh, sufi poets especially umar khayyam his poetry is full of these allegories of uh, he has made use metaphor of wine and woman but they are all metaphors he was a great saint a great astronomer so mathematician what he was trying to say in this one of his rubais is ah oh, beloved fill the cup that clears of past regrets and future fears unborn tomorrow dead yesterday wife fret about them when today be sweet what he means is that the cup of life should be filled with the present aspect present tense not worry about all the losses you have incurred not fear about the future that's why in the quran e sharif while praising the god's loved ones they are known as saints allah inna friends of god allah inna awliya allah la khaufun alaihim wala hum yazanun if you are in friendship with the god and and have immense faith that he will take care of your present and future and all that and you have patience you have got tolerance you take the good and bad and ugly and worst which is happening in life in a good stride and you work to prevent anything happening and toward and you are always prepared to meet the eventualities you have got enough sufficient insurances sufficient balances and any individual earthquake takes place in your mind and heart you have got the enough strength to face it you have to build your defenses you have to both defenses for your present and for your future if you do today the tomorrow will take care of itself if you sow in the winter you will reap in the summer if you have enough storage of water in the summer that will help you if you have done it during winter and rainy season enough storage that will help you in the summer but if you neglect 
the negligence is the greatest enemy of time so you have to be alert and that alertness comes from consciousness you have to develop this consciousness when you have developed your consciousness and steadiness in your mind and heart and not using foulness f o u l foul foul language foul talk foul way of life then you are cre- you are your own, own enemy nobody can help a person who is his own enemy you have to fight against your own evil tendencies proclivities in your mind and heart so that you can create time the time becomes your servant not so that it can help you the the ibnul waqt they say all sufis are ibnul waqt you look around to the things within yourself and build up all that is required to face the eventualities that may come tomorrow so work on today today you make sweet you make this present tense better not while away the time it's not that you should not enjoy you should give but how much pleasure has to be given to the body is even a medical uh, question even my, so psychologists and psychiatrists who treat mental cases mental patients they all come to the conclusion that this man's personality has been lost because of he is not preparing proper defense mechanism he is unable to take the stress strain he was unable to overcome the difficulties he had so much of desire beyond his uh, uh, reach and he wanted to reach and he became so um, uh, high desiring person and uh, his all his desires fell to the ground and he had a mental breakdown so you must be realistic not too very optimistic but realistic not pes- not pessimistic also you shouldn't be pessimistic all the time oh i will not achieve i will not get i am like this i am like that i am a failure no you are not a failure you are going to achieve today a better life today's life will be a life of victory a win win situation so you have to learn this from sufis that is why we need masters not say that masters are not required i can directly approach the quran and uh, holy bible and uh, gita and i can learn everything is yes, you need somebody to interpret put you the right dosage of medicine in you you cannot become your own physician and create your own medicine and drink that may harm your liver it may harm your kidney so it is doctors the pharmacists they know to what extent after lot of experimentation training they get the medical standards and the test the medicine passes through the stages and only in the small quantum the active ingredient is given so that you are cured so you cannot be more than being the your doctor of your own self but you have to depend on the professional doctors who would diagnose the disease and give you the right medicine so right medicine at right time in right dosage and observing parhez as we say in urdu that is you have to stay away for a diabetic the doctor will tell you not to take take only diabetic fruit not take sweets not overdo thing otherwise your kidney or lungs and your eyesight everything will be lost so if this in the modern sense when you sufis are saying leave for the time it means leave according to your means leave according to your knowledge leave according to your don't create very high fantastic uh, ideas which will not take you at all be realistic in life for the time unborn tomorrow dead yesterday why fret about them why be angry about them when today be sweet enjoy the present time thank you uh, thank you for the answer and uh, uh, the uh, next question is uh, more on to uh, the sufi music uh, it's like uh, quite after <clears throat> uh, listening to some of the uh, sufi musics uh, from uh, a person's perspective from this uh, era of of you know uh, the 20th century like uh, i would like to say that we have been listening to sufi music only through movies or uh, mostly mostly from movies or from khawalis uh and uh, the uh, the uh, other jamaats or the uh, the the salafis or uh, the the other jamaats with respect and love to them uh, they say that uh, the sufi music uh, have come into existence in india 
only due to the hindu bhajans but after being within touch uh, after being in touch with you uh, by by gaining some knowledge from you i understand that this sufi music or sama has been practiced from uh, practiced right from hazrat junaid baghdadi rahmatullahi hazrat jalaluddin rumi rahmatullahi and then uh, again coming from hazrat khwaja muinuddin chisti to right to hazrat jaisa daraz bande nawaz uh, in uh, in gulbarga but uh, the 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 question is uh, the the question is more specific here that how i mean the the sufi music which according to the the sufis of chistia which uh, has become very popular in the in the chistia silsila and uh, you know it it uh, according to them it heals the soul it heals it it is more kind of into spirituality is what they say uh, so what is your opinion about sufi sufi uh, music and uh, how do you think you know it helps a person into spirituality molana jalaluddin rumi rahmatullah le has uh, begun his work the great masnavi of nearly 50000 lines by narrating the story of a bamboo reed which is separated from the tree and in the love sings the sad songs to go and merge with the lord so the separation of a human being the adam from the lord created grief sadness melancholy and it gave rise to music when the love was created in the mind mind and heart with beauty when it was separated from the beloved the veins started singing they became like strings of sitar and the music came into the human mind and soul from the time of creation creation of adam itself it is not new to the sufism music in greek mythology and all that there is a god of music so also in hindu mythology saraswati and all they were all god goddesses so the music is a, uh, is in the breath of mind in the breath of human being so the it is not that khawali was first sung in india it was there from the much before the prophet's time prophet himself has composed many poems and the quran was mistaken to be a poetry but not a word of wisdom so it was god who had to say yasin wal quran al hakim this is a book of wisdom so it is not just poetry the poetry is more about emotions it is spontaneous expression of emotions so the when the divine songs are sung it creates divine feelings and purifies the mind and heart so the the film industry is trying to utilize any means by which they can become popular and make money they have utilized the khawals but these are purely it is sung in the company of a saint in a very great pious manner and the piety and the love and the atmosphere of uh, spiritual atmosphere which is gathered around the saint when the singer with a good voice sings the love songs of great saints a great great feeling is developed a spiritual feeling is developed and the sixth sense starts working and meditative things happen and uh, many knowledge dawns on the mind and heart so i have also written about 2000 poems in english and my works have been published 15 volumes and uh, latest uh, second collection of my work perfume garden of love has come out from authors press new delhi in that at page 446 i have a poem on love which i will recite before ending this session this is all a poem of love for the god and this poem is more uh, sets into the talk we have today on oh my love oh my lord fill my heart with that elixir of life that should empty it from the love of the world O oh my lord as i am now aging and life is slipping away so also the desire for this world fill my being with your love o oh my lord let silence overtake my heart and mind let the muttering and chatting melt away into nothingness o oh lord let my tongue praise thee love thee with all my heart the whole universe is filled with the love of the lord with his beauty and with his 
with his effulgence. So our heart, mind and soul should feel the wonders of the world which are around us, the magic which is there. The more we go deep into this magic, these things with awe-inspiring things, our heart and mind gets filled with love. So even when you are traveling, when you are sitting, if you keep on contemplating on this beauty of the love, beauty of the love, the effulgence, the, your mind gets illumined and you get closer and closer to beauty and love and your mind becomes clear and peace and tranquility and peace will come to you. The, all these uh, are all paths. Sufism is a path. Yoga is a path. Modern personality training is a path. But the aim should be to reach the bliss, the supreme bliss, Sakinatul Qulubil Muminin, to achieve the bliss, to see the light of the Lord. Once you see the light of the Lord, you are satisfied and your life will have a purpose and fulfillment. So you should have a fulfillment in living. And it's only when you clear the, wa the waters and the marshy land of all this ugliness and go towards the purity, you will achieve good things in life and you will be happy for having lived a good life and left a good progeny so that they can also follow your path. Thank you for your coming to the Sufi Center and for posing some questions for our benefit.